The Enigma of Easter Island, a remote volcanic landmass in the Pacific Ocean, has captivated people's mind for many decades. However, there are numerous other solitary islands on our planet. What sets Easter Island apart is that the puzzle is not actually located on the island itself, but rather in the form of colossal stone statues that adorn it. The creators of these famous gigantic stones' heads are shrouded in mystery. Did these statues have a specific purpose? Where did their makers come from? And where did they vanish to? Fortunately, it seems that the answer to these questions is imminent. You can quench your curiosity by watching this video. Remember to give us a thumbs up as we strive to bring you knowledge about the truths of Easter Island, which will brighten your life. As for the island itself, its original inhabitants called it Rapa Nui, and it's currently under Chilean territory. It is located in the southern Pacific Ocean, which is so remote that it can be considered one of the farthest places on the world map. It is situated 1,200 miles away from its closest neighbor, Pitcairn, and Chile is 2,300 miles to the west. The only means of transportation to the island is by plane, and if you're planning a trip there, be prepared for a 5-hour flight from Santiago, Chile to Easter Island. Let's acknowledge that despite its small size of only 63 square miles, Easter Island is home to an impressive 887 large stone statues. Here are some interesting facts about these statues that you may not be aware of. They are commonly referred to as Moai, and their production began sometime between the 13th and 15th centuries. The Rapa Nui statues are easily recognizable due to their unique facial features, such as long noses, wide chins, rectangular ears, heavy brows, and deeply set eyes. Interestingly, the nostril of these statues curl in the same way as fish hooks. Initially, people assumed that the statues were only made up of heads, but it was discovered during excavation in May 2012 that they also had full bodies buried underground. These statues are quite tall, with the largest one measuring 33 feet in height and weighing 90 US tons. However, the tallest statues ever discovered in the island was incomplete. But based on scientific calculations, it was estimated to have stood at 70 feet in height and weigh around 297 US tons. The visible heads of the statues seen from the first sites make up only 3 8 of the statue's total size. The arms of the statues were carved against the bodies in various positions. Most of the statues specifically, 834 out of 887, were made from tough, compressed volcanic ash. Curiously, all of the statues except for one group face inward toward the village, meaning that their backs are turned to the ocean. It's believed that this was done because the statues were seen as protector of the village and overlook the settlement. The only statues that don't fit into this pattern are located at a sacred place for the people of Rapa Nui, Ahu Akivi. Among the statues at this location, there is a unique one known as Tukuturi that was found in a kneeling position. Scientists believe that it depicts an ancient singer whose position resembles the one taken during the festival of Rui. Tukuturi's head is lifted quite high and he even has a beard, making it look much more human-like than the other statues. Its smaller size and the fact that it was made from red Punapau stone make it stand out from the rest. These facts are intriguing and there are still several mysteries surrounding the island. One of them is how the statues, which weigh so much, were distributed all around the island. When Europeans first arrived on the island in 1722, they found only a small local population of between one and a half and three thousand people. This begs the questions of how they could have created and moved so many statues. Well, there have been numerous theories about how the statues were moved. 
One of the most popular ones among mystery lovers is the belief that the statues were created and moved by aliens. However, this theory is debunked as the stone used to build the statues originated from the island itself, specifically from an extinct volcano situated in the northeast of Easter Island and not from another planet. The mystery surrounding how the Rapa Nui people moved the statues challenged researchers for decades. In the 80s, some researchers decided to recreate a statue using only tools that would have been available to the islanders, and it seemed impossible to move it around. However, a bit later, an American archaeologist succeeded in moving a 10 US ton copy. Several decades later, another group of American scientists proved that the islanders could tie ropes around the huge statues and move them with a walking motion. They even moved a full-size replica of 330 feet using this method. Their idea can explain why Rapa Nui folklore states that the statues were walking with the help of magic, which explains the way the statues were transported to their designated places. A question remains. How could such a small population create such impressive monuments? Recently, a study was conducted to determine the maximum number of inhabitants during the island's civilization peak. Surprisingly, it was found out that up to 17,500 people could live comfortably on the island, with at least 19% of the land used for sweet potato fields, the main food source and a significant consumption of seafood and fish. This suggests that there were enough people to create the stone masterpieces. However, what happened to them? It was once believed that deforestations and agriculture caused ecocide and hunger, leading to wars and cannibalism. But now it's known that the population only started to decline when Europeans began visiting. Sadly, South American slave raids and the introduction of new diseases through forced migration caused the decline of the Rapa Nui people. These tragic events led to the decline of a nation that presented the world with the mystery of Easter Island. What do you think of these facts? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Like the video and subscribe to join us on the Bright Side.